Welcome to online worship at Mayville United Methodist Church on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. My name is Steve Delano, and we're so glad that you're worshiping with us. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. May this be a very special day for you. For the message today, we will continue to explore who Jesus is. From the Gospel of John, we will hear what Jesus tells his disciples is the greatest love. I also want to remind you that next Sunday, May 16th, is Confirmation Sunday. We will be celebrating with our confirmands as they join Mayville United Methodist Church. We are also planning to have fellowship in the parking lot next Sunday after worship to honor our confirmands. Our hymn of praise is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. This hymn was written in 1782 by John Fawcett. The theme of Fawcett's hymn is that the body of Christ is bound together by love. Let us sing. children of God. This week's scripture is about love. Jesus tells us that out of all of his teachings, loving one another is the most important. Isn't that interesting? When we think of the people we love, we probably think of certain people, our families, maybe special friends. 
Maybe today you think of a mother or a grandmother or a special aunt or a, a good close friend, but Jesus reminds us of something important. He doesn't say, pick a few people to love. He tells us to love one another. He wants us to show our love to everyone. Jesus wants us to treat everybody we encounter with kindness and love. But that's not all. Jesus not only wants us to love everybody, he wants us to love everyone in the same way that he showed his love to us. That's a lot of love. And what does that mean anyway? We can say the word love, but sometimes love is something we show people. For instance, Lincoln made me this at school this week. So it is an owl cup that he colored himself with my favorite colors, and he put a plant in it because he knows I love gardening and house plants and anything green and growing. That's a way that he showed his love to me. So how can we show love to the people who we care about? Well, ask them. Ask them what means love to them, and then show them love, just the way Jesus shows his love to us. I hope you have a great week. Thanks for listening. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Loving and gracious God, Easter is such a wonderful season. Hope springs anew in our hearts. As the earth is being refreshed by the warmth of spring, so we have been refreshed and made new by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful and forgiving God, we know that we sin against you and others. Help us to face our weakness and accept your forgiving grace. Heal us of our sins and place us again on the paths of peace. Healing and comforting God, we marvel at your never-ending love and care. We pray for all of our family and friends that are sick or hurting. May you provide them with comfort and healing. We pray for all in our world that are in need or distress. May you provide them with strength, peace, and endurance. Almighty God, we are called to love each other with the kind of love that Christ displayed, patient, respectful, strong. Love must take the form of service and compassion, of hope and proclamation, of patient waiting and urgent striving for the good of all people. Open our hearts, Lord, and imprint your message of love upon us that all we say and do is done in your name and for the sake of your people and your world. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's New Testament lesson is taken from the book of John, chapter 15 verse 9 through 17. These are the words of Jesus Christ. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, 
If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of God. Love is the theme of today's scripture passage. It seems like a very appropriate theme for Mother's Day. This passage is also a continuation of Jesus's message from last week's scripture reading of abiding in Jesus. Through our connection to Jesus, our dependence on Jesus, and our remaining in Jesus. In the book of Matthew, when a Pharisee lawyer asked Jesus which commandment in the law is the greatest, Jesus said to him in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Both of these great commandments are based on love, love of God and love of others. Today's passage begins with Jesus equating the love he has received from the Father to his love for the disciples. He charges the disciples with keeping his commandments just as he has kept his father's commandments. Jesus continues to compel the disciples to abide in him, in his love. The result of abiding in his love will be joy, not just any joy, but the pure and complete joy that Jesus has from his mutual love with God the Father. Next, Jesus gives the disciples a new commandment that is similar but more specific than the second commandment that I just read from the Gospel of Matthew. In verse 12, Jesus tells them, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. You see, Jesus is preparing the disciples for the time that is coming when he will no longer be with them. He knows that they will face many trials, tribulations, and even persecution, and that they truly need to love, support, and rely on one another. Then in probably the most significant verse of this lesson, Jesus explains what this love is that he is commanding them to do. In verse 13, Jesus tells them, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The greatest love is to lay down your life for your friends. Let that sink in for a moment. The greatest love is to lay down your life for your friends. This is not a passionate or a romantic love. This is love in action. I think many of us can relate to this active form of love. On this Mother's Day, I am certain that most mothers have this kind of love for their children that you as a mother would lay down your life for your children, that you would do almost anything to protect them, to enable them to have hope, joy, and peace so that they truly have life. 
This love is not restricted to mothers. Fathers have this love for their children, husbands for their wives, wives for their husbands, even children for their parents and siblings for their siblings. All might claim this type of love that Jesus spoke of. But what about your friends? What about your neighbors? This is the greatest love to lay down your life for others. Jesus did this for us. He showed the disciples and us the greatest love. We usually focus on our belief that Jesus laid down his life, died on the cross for our sins so that our sins would be forgiven. However, Jesus laid down his life for something much, much greater than our sins. He laid down his life because of his love for us. Long before you and I were born, Jesus laid down his life for us to give us life. Next, Jesus calls his disciples friends. This is another important step in the disciples' journey. They are no longer just his servants and students, but now he considers them friends. Jesus is clearly lifting the disciples up. As of this moment, Jesus has told them all that he has heard from the Father. We know that throughout Jesus' three-year ministry, he was teaching his disciples and other followers day after day. The disciples also learned from Jesus as they walked from town to town and as they rested, prayed, and broke bread together. Can you imagine being part of that journey? And now, Jesus is telling them that he has told them everything. It must have been an incredible feeling of both joy to have received these words and despair to know that Jesus will soon leave them. Then Jesus reminds them that they did not choose him. He chose them. They were each chosen for this most important job. And soon their real work would begin as Jesus has appointed them to go and bear fruit. Has Jesus chosen you? Are you appointed to go and bear fruit? The answer is clearly yes. Yes, Jesus has chosen you. It's almost 2,000 years after Jesus said this to his disciples. Yet here we are celebrating the Easter season, celebrating the good news of Jesus Christ. Each of us has been chosen, chosen to love God with all our heart, soul and mind, and to love one another as we love ourselves. This is an active love, unconditional, self-sacrificial, and servant-hearted love. Jesus has chosen us to bear fruit that will last. There is a subtle difference between being charged to bear fruit versus being charged to bear fruit that will last. On our own, we certainly may be able to bear fruit. But with God working in us through the Holy Spirit, not only will we bear fruit, but it will be a lasting fruit. If we simply abide in Jesus, be united in Jesus, rely on Jesus, and remain in Jesus, we make it possible for God to work through us and produce 
the fruit that will last. Friends, we may not be called to lay down our lives for others as Jesus did for us. However, we are certainly called, chosen to love one another as Jesus commanded his disciples. We are chosen to bear fruit that will last as we allow God's love and grace to work through us. Amen. Please join me in affirming our faith in God with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Please receive the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.